one in three women are going to experience some form of psychological or physical abuse at the hands of their partner throughout their lifetime. Even more frightening than that is that 14 women, six men and 10 children are going to die as a result of an incident of domestic violence. And then there are our police force. They're called to 200 incidents of domestic violence a day. That's one every seven minutes. And the most frightening of all, get this, the police estimate that only 18% of domestic violence incidents are actually reported. If you're one of those people that have the privilege of enjoying a marriage that is completely contented, completely fulfilled, uh, free of any sort of violence or abuse, cherish it, relish it, and count your blessings, because many are not in that privileged position. There's an interesting uh, example in Scripture, in, in the Bible, that just it captures my imagination, because it's the idea that Jesus so loved His church that He laid down His life to spare her, to save her, to restore her. You know, it's like the picture of what love really is, the willingness to forget oneself in order to reach out to the other. And I think to myself, isn't that what marriage is supposed to be like? Isn't that in fact the epitome, the ideal for a healthy, happy, flourishing marriage? That's in fact what that scripture says. It, it asks husbands to love their wives in that kind of self-sacrificing way which is totally countercultural when you think about it because everything in our culture and our society is about the me generation, about how I can obtain greatest fulfillment and enjoyment and pleasure and the like. Our culture is that men are strong and men take and men do. And actually, Scripture comes along and says, you want a marriage that works? You want a marriage that thrives? You want a marriage where people are happy, contented and fulfilled? It's going to look different. It's going to be where a man is a man based on his willingness to lay down his life, to bless, to serve, to nurture, to protect, to save. What would our marriages look like if this was the estimate of manhood that we strove to attain to? What would our, how would our marriages and our homes be different? Because I'm thinking there would be less abuse, I'm thinking there would be less selfishness. I'm thinking there would be greater contentment, fulfillment. I'm thinking our women, our wives, would, would feel protected and nurtured, that they may even begin to come into their own and to blossom. I'm thinking that marriages could be very different, that our families here in New Zealand would be profoundly, positively impacted by men who step forward and say, no more using my strength for me but I'm going to use my strength to love, to lay down my life, to sacrifice for my wife, for my children, for my family. That's the picture of Jesus. That's what families are supposed to be just a small taste of experientially. What a different picture. So what about you today? What do you say? Are you willing to give this new picture a go in your family?